Good morning, beloved. We're going to finish this video that the Lord has prepared for us and given up me the scriptures uh, that I'm to look up um, in the spirit. The Good Shepherd, um, we follow his voice and no other. Okay, um, praise his name today. Everyone, thank him for this beautiful day. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Lord. And sing his praises today, beloved. I love to sing the Psalms, and you can look up on YouTube the scriptures, um, King James Version. Uh, psalms and and songs so you could speak uh, speak the word of the lord in your praise and worship like king david did um by the spirit of god hallelujah pray that god will put you in the spirit when you're praising him and we are in the spirit we're sealed in the holy um and at the same time the apostles said i was in the I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Now it's God's Holy Spirit that we're talking about because our spirit is in his spirit. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So it's his spirit. We must be born again to be to see the kingdom. We must be born again of his spirit. Praise the Lord. Because his spirit is holiness. His spirit is righteousness. And that's whenever he says, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Okay, it's God's righteousness, praise the Lord. And we, being children of God, we can walk in that righteousness by the Spirit. Praise His name, hallelujah. And so, a lot of people, they want you just to focus on the positive of the Scriptures. They don't want you to focus on anything else. But, beloved, Jesus was rebuking the wicked all the time. <laughs> he was always correcting people who were following um, other doctrines. And He was... Like the he said, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy and doctrine doctrines of demons. He he clarified that the doctrines of the Pharisees don't you know don't follow those, and even the apostles continued that ministry of Jesus Christ. Um, everything that he spoke to them, he reminded them by the Spirit of God, our Father. And so you see in the scriptures, it also um, has in the, in the revelation of Jesus Christ about the end. And even when Jesus was talking, he said that these words that I speak, they will judge at the end. So you see in the book of Revelation, epistle of Jude, and throughout the scriptures, God is speaking about the wicked and what their end is going to be. A lot of it is to warn them so that they would turn and repent from their wicked deeds. Some of them, it's just telling them what their judgment is because they believe not. And the wicked are wicked because they believe not. Now look at your arm, beloved saints, and look at your wrist. You have blood running through your veins, right? You have water that you have to, your body is made up of, and you have to drink water, right? And you have a spirit. You know you have an inner man, inner man an inner spirit, a soul. Jesus was just like us, but he was God in that man, and his blood was shed for our sins. He was fully God in that man, Jesus, the Son of Man. And he fulfilled it all so that all could be re, um, re, um, reconciled unto God. And there's restitution of all things that's happening right now. Praise the Lord. And that is through his judgments, beloved. It says in the scriptures that God loves judgment. He said that they had forsaken three things, and one of them was judgment. Now, we should always offer mercy with judgment because God is merciful, but he's a righteous judge. Without righteous judgment, you have chaos in your home. You have wickedness in your home. God is not a God of chaos. He's not a God of confusion. Satan's the author of confusion, and that's why all these poor people are, are confused about their gender because Satan has come into the world, and his spirit is here, the spirit of iniquity, the spirit we were talking about yesterday, the, the, the force, the God of forces. Okay, this isn't the Antichrist. God's spirit is, is completely clear to me in the scriptures what his righteousness is and what his children should be um, exampling and we should be righteous like him. Jesus did not do witchcraft. No, whenever he spoke to God and God made things happen, that was God's spirit making things happen or showing what would happen because of the wickedness and the cold hearts of many, that hearts would grow cold and we see hearts growing cold. But God's spirit is like fire. His his heart is fire. He's on he's um, on fire for his people. He is a lamp, a word, the word of God that became flesh. And so, um, when you're looking at your your wrist, know that he shed his blood for you. His blood, because we don't battle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. So put on your full armor of God, your helmet of salvation, your breastplate of righteousness, your shield of faith, your sword of the spirit, the loins girt with the spirit of truth, and the feet shot with preparation of the gospel of peace that makes peace between man and, and, and God. 
That's the man Christ Jesus, the Prince of Peace, praise his name. And one of the ways he did it was he spoke about the wicked, where he's going to put them. And you can see that in Matthew 25. Turn to Matthew 25. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it's basically he talks about the talents that he gives to his people, the five wise virgins versus the unwise virgins. The five wise virgins have oil in their lamps. And then he goes up on to talk about the kingdom of heaven in, in, in verse 14. And he talks about how he calls his servants. Now, he, we are his friends too, but we're also his servants like the apostles. If you're a believer, you're, you're serving the Lord. We will serve the Lord, it says in the scriptures him alone jesus said that to satan now jesus fulfilled all of that he he that's why we're in christ that's why we say in christ because it's his righteousness that we 